This episode of Capes and Lunatic Sidekicks is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. To get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off free shipping and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. Hey, what about that Angel podcast? What about us? Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Angel Chronicles. I am Phil. Hey y'all, y'all know who it is. What's up? So that kind of comes with this episode. But before we get to that. Should we discuss? Uh, I didn't pick it up. I was looking for it today. I didn't see it. I'm trying to go somewhere else. Uh, Entertainment Weekly this week put out their uh, special uh, 20th anniversary of the first uh, of the premiere of Angel issue this week. Yeah, yeah, they did that. <laughs> I don't know. Like I said, I, I don't know how I feel about it. Why? I don't know. Like Buffy's like I'm, like I love Angel. Don't get me wrong. But I don't, I don't know if like Angel's like as big a cultural touchstone as Buffy was. Like no shade to the cast and crew or whatever. Just like eh, it must have been a slow news week <laughs> for on the entertainment side. That, that that's all. How dare you? I, I love Angel, but I'm just saying I don't think it had a big as big a cultural impact as Buffy did. Um, I don't. I don't know anybody that is teaching courses about Angel. There are literally college courses about Buffy and feminism and things like that. That's all. I like, I, like, I love Angel, but, like, on the same token, like, Buffy's first and, like, don't try to sell her thunder. Well, I mean, from, I guess because it's a spinoff, and I mean, with the exception of, like, a few characters like Gunn and Fred, I mean, most of these characters did come from Buffy anyway. True, true. Looking at you, Spike. We'll get there. <laughs> Well, then you have Connor and you have Lauren. I don't know. Yeah. Wolf from at heart. Yeah. Yeah. But no, no, it, it was a night. It's, it's, you know, like I said, I feel like it was a slow, um, entertainment news week. So they're just like, why not? <laughs> hey, hey, I saw a cut. They, they were playing some clips of like some interview or something. Hey, they can all come on here and talk. Oh, yeah. I, I'd love that. Mm hmm. But, um, yeah, I mean, Entertainment Weekly is not what it used to be. <laughs> oh, I know it'd be awesome since this is, I mean, mostly, I mean, we do do on YouTube, but also it's mostly like an audio thing. Get, get as much of the cast on here as we could and have them like live read a script or something. How awesome would that be? A, a fan fiction theater script, you say? I got the perfect thing. Um, <laughs> I've been holding on to it for damn near 10 years. <laughs> Boy, you thought this episode, Dear Boy, was good. <laughs> Read Lil's uh, fan fiction. Uh, okay, so the name of this episode is Dear Boy. It always, like, now in my head, it makes me think of the movie Old Boy. Like, if anybody has seen that movie, especially, like, not the American remake, but the original one. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like, a, it sounds like, a, like a, one of those dog movies. It's like, oh, the old boy. Oh, but it is not. It is a effed up movie. <laughs> Google it. <laughs> anyway, but yes, yeah, so I'm just like, oh, like this. Sometimes it's just not good to look at back, back at things in retrospect because you get like all these like tainted things attached to it. <laughs> like what? No, like like I said, the movie. Oh boy, it's effed uh, up. Yeah, it's a good movie, but it's effed up. So, but yeah, and this this has Kate as Philip made an allusion to. Um, it's just like after Untouched, I think this needed to have like a um buffer because now you have two episodes where it's just like, and we care because. Oh, <laughs> just saying. I mean, who, nobody was clamoring for more Kate on Angel. That's all I'm saying. Well, I was gonna say, was this like the the last gasp of like, hey, let's try to make Kate a thing? How can you make Kate a thing when freaking Darla's here and and we're talking Drusilla? So it's just like no one cares. No one cares. This is the worst way to try to give Kate her last hurrah. That's all I'm saying. I know. Just and it was just annoying. It's like we it, approve angels, you know, not that good. It's weird because it's written and directed by David Greenwald, a staple, an executive producer, a showrunner, a name known in the Buffyverse. So it just is like it has a flashback. I love the angel flashbacks for the most part. 
I mean, is it just like a thing where there, there, there's certain characters who just won't click no matter who writes them? You know, it's like George's. They just life. didn't have chemistry. Mm. And I, I, I believe I've read this several places that the two actors just didn't get along. So, you know, you gotta, you can't force it, especially when the star and you're just a recurring, you know, it's like, mm-hmm. I don't know who, if she was like friends with somebody and they kept trying on, on like on the staff and they kept trying to make it happen. Like, Oh, come on, David, give her a chance. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's what it felt like. So yeah, seriously. Um, but no, this one is, um, the week before October, uh, October, the week before Halloween. So we never really celebrate Halloween in the Buffy verse, except for that, like one time. It's fine. I'm not bitter. Um, <laughs> Dar, Darlich is masquerading as someone else. Yeah. Yeah. Cause she wants to turn him to the dark side. And I'm just like, but he killed you. Screw the dark side. Kill him. Oh, well, you know, is it, it's, it's like, Wolf that vampire D must be hella good, bro. Like, that's all I'm saying. I know if I got resurrected, first thing I'm doing is killing the person that killed me. That, that's just me. That, that, that's my, that's my course of action. Well, like, we find out something later that she needs to like, become a vampire again. So I think she's trying to lure him into turning her. Of course, but there's so many other people that can do that. <laughs> As we discover. Yes. <laughs> but just in general, just like, I don't know. The, the, the vampires in Buffy are very, um, kind of they're kind of ego maniacal and mm-hmm. who doesn't want to sire someone you know like it's just the thing but we'll, we'll keep going very very, uh, very <laughs> incestuous but very incestuous yeah uh, incestuous hair because it's like you know she made him now she wants her to make him bad you know yeah her. it's all kind of too bloody but we'll just move along um so yeah angel wakes up to like Again, Cordelia Wesley bickering. Kind of wakes up. He's like he's dozing on the couch. Yeah, it's like, why do Cordelia and Wesley bicker so much in season two? Like, for the life of me, I honestly don't know. Everyone bickers with Wesley. Gun bickers with Wesley sometimes. Cordelia. But no, like, I swear this is like the, what is this, like the fifth episode? And this is, it's happened to literally almost as many episodes, maybe four, four, this is the fourth episode out of five episodes in this second season where they're bickering, like at the beginning of the episode. <laughs> I'm just saying. Oh yeah, cause they, they need money and he's like, why can't you just have a vision? And she's like, it's not like you just hit me on the head and I have. And then she gets a. <laughs> Because she's like, well, why don't you look at one of your big old books? He's like, well, she's like, well, you can't just hit me on the head. Well, why don't I choose one of my big old books and try? Exactly. And, just, and so, like, they're trying to find that demon from her vision. Angel's daydreaming about Darla. The big thing growing out of the wall. Yeah. I hate when we're at underground stuff. It just makes me feel claustrophobic. But And then there's, like, cloaked dudes fighting a thrall demon and i'm just like okay they were all under the spell of this thing you know you i know made them have a dress co- it had made him have a dress code <laughs> i mean you know he wanted to class up the joy it's fine i understand i get it <laughs> and it's just is that just like a shot from angel to cordelia it's like oh gun he's on the payroll now well he and he's got a fancy new axe <laughs> That yeah. he uses to destroy the demon. <laughs> he added at least one episode prior. I, th- I, I, th- I think this is brand new. Let me double check. Oh, yeah, because Angel's out. This, of- yeah, yeah, this is, yeah. Angel's just like beating on one, the one guy and kind of like, Angel, cover me. Or just keep beating on that big guy. <laughs> yeah. Nope, nope, this is the first one. This is the first appearance of this one. This is the one that the kids at his camp made for him. Okay, I, sw- I could have swore. I thought the one with him, that episode with him him and Cordelia. He- nope, it's slightly different. Okay. Um. So, yeah, I was like, okay, well, gums the muscle. We've established this. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all know how I feel about Gun at this point in his evolution as a character on Angel. So just don't mind me. Y'all just, just keep in mind that I love J. August Richards. Just, just I, know that. I've been trying to defend him, but I mean, they kind of made him such a stereotype in this episode, but we'll get there. Um, meanwhile, while walking home, Angel literally sees Darla walking the streets. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're like, um, are we still hallucinating or not? <laughs> What's well, like, I mean, yeah, he, yeah, I mean, he could, uh, hallucinate her walking down the street because she was a street walker like, in a former life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
You know, that's how you get syphilis, kids. Keep your genitals to yourself until you're married, because this is the Buffy verse. <laughs> I was gonna say, who are you? Who are you? What are you doing with Little Hellfire? Hey, at least wrap it up. <laughs> Just say it. Um. Anyway, in a, in a flashback, Angel's like walking through the streets um, until he finds Darla, who, uh, you know. She just killed a streetwalker and her customer. <laughs> I'm like, well, that's one way. She wanted to bicker over the price, yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 And is that, is that the, is, was it in that first flashback when she's like, oh, I was surprised for you? Yeah, I think so. She points out a young woman and it's Drusilla. Yeah, it says see her. And he's like, um, she tells him, you know, she's like, you know, she's got the gift of vision and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, poor Drew. And then <sighs> Angelus is all excited. He's like, oh, she can see what I'm about to do to her. Buddy, turn to, but anyway. <laughs> like, he really didn't do much to her, <laughs> except for make her slightly more crazy, but well, it's fine. That we saw. Yeah. Anyway, Angel tells Wesley and Cordelia about seeing Darla in his dreams and in real life, and he's like, I think I'm going crazy. Cut to... Ah, all the, the couple that I wanted to happen, Lindsay and Darla. Oh, he wanted it to happen too. But no, so, I I just love when he tells Cordelia and Wesley, and you know, he's like, I saw her, and Cordelia is like, oh, not Buffy again. I like her and everything. No, the other blonde. <laughs> yeah, the other blonde. That's funny. Just <laughs> he has a type. And uh, when we get there, Connor has a type too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Moving right along until we get to that atrocious season. <laughs> Four years. Anyway, um, anyway, Lindsay and Arlen talk about their progress and their manipulations of Angel, and I'm just like, just shut up and kiss. Make it a thing. Just do it. She starts rubbing his fake hand. <laughs> I was like, what? What is this? Is this Game of Thrones? Are you Jamie Lannister? Like, she's like, you can't feel that. Not in the hand. <laughs> twitch, twitch. Um. <laughs> Meanwhile, cut to the least, my least favorite part of this damn episode. We go to the police station okay. that we haven't seen in forever. Well, she got moved too. Yeah. But we haven't, we haven't been with the police in forever. Oh no. Kate, Kate was the only reason to go to the police for the most part. Yeah. She's got a desk job. She's been transferred due, due to her weird obsession with the <clears throat> occult. And then she also gets like this notice that Angel moved into the old Hyperion Hotel. Dun, dun, dun. Uh-huh. Kate go away. Well, necessary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we kind of get a potential customer, paying customer, put because I'm Cordelia apparently. I have to put the emphasis on that. Um, and they present their case to Cordy and Wesley, and uh, he thinks his wife is being abducted by aliens. Oh, well, she has to be. She disappears every so often for like a week. Or she's cheating on him with another dude. You know, what's more likely? But she couldn't. If she loves me. <laughs> I just love Angel. You know, Angel, like Angel. this is not the kind of case Angel Investigations takes. Do we need the money this bad? I mean, well, you got no overhead with this damn historic hotel. Everybody just move in, and it's fine. Well, well, like Cordelia says, easy for you to say. We don't have to. You don't need solid food to survive. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Although as skinny as Cordy was the first two seasons, I don't think she <laughs> she was on any solid food either. But moving right along. Um so you know, Angel Investigation spies on the woman and of course she's having an affair. But Angel spoils that cover because he's just like, I can't believe we're doing this. And he just straight up confronts the lady. He's like, Talk to your husband. And I love the eighteen hundreds, he's just like, I'm listening to you over here on this machine. <laughs> Like his grandma. It's like I'm listening to him on the machine and I'm just go home, work it out, you know, either work out work it out or leave. But just, you know, do something. And I, I love when Angel's like, Your husband knows. I'm like, really? Does he really know? <laughs> exactly. He doesn't want to know. So another funny thing happens, you know, he's he's ruined the job, they're not getting paid. So Angel uh Cordy's arguing with him and then he spots Darla. Mm-hmm. And confronts her. She's like, um, no, my name is the Edit Kramer. Mm-hmm. And then he like tries to chase her and she's oh. in the sunlight. Oh, well, he even says to her, he goes, I know you're not running out in that sunlight, but she does. And it's like, bum, bum, bum. Of course she's human. Duh. Mm hmm. Cause she hasn't used her vamp speed to get away. <laughs> like, hello. 
Should, I mean, I guess maybe not, but I'm like, sh- he said he could, he knows her sense, so shouldn't he be able to tell the difference between vampire and human? But also, he's been sleep deprived, and they're working these manipulations, and he's not, he, he thinks he's going insane. And he's thinking with the wrong head, yes, I know. Yeah, even though blood's not, shouldn't be flowing to it? I, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe the soul has like a thing, I don't know. Well, I don't know what kind of weird Twilight crap we're working with, I don't know. That's supposed to his diet, isn't it? So, I mean... <laughs> Maybe the vampire D is better. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. True blood would have you think so. I'm just saying. <laughs> Any vampires, please uh, contact Little Hellfire. No, no. <laughs> no. I will stake you and you will die. <laughs> anyway, um, Angel goes to uh, Caritas and sings, everybody have fun tonight. Oh, uh, I know. He tasks Wesley for money for the cover. He's like, what? You're not. No. <laughs> But the uh, but the host, aka Andy, refuses to help him. He's like, "You got to stay away from Darla." And we're just like, "Wait a minute, what?" He's like, "I'm set, uh, my job is to set you on your path." He's like, "This is way off your path." This is where it dawned on me, like, "Oh, so we don't really technically have the powers that be, but we kind of do now in the form of um, Lord. the host." Yeah. And Kiritas is like that little that little like that hidden pocket away from like you know prying eyes or whatever. Oh yeah, look what happened to the oracles. <laughs> Exactly. So it's just like, hmm, okay. I could see that. <laughs> mm-hmm. I like that a lot better because the, the powers that be that we had before were not helpful. No. They were jerks. No, no, no. <laughs> um, so anyway, Angel finds um, the Kramer home and he's lurking outside. And then Darla, of course, they, they went all out and they hired an actor to play her husband. And, uh, <laughs> oh, I love that dinner scene. <laughs> yes. She goes on and on about acting and she's just, just like, he grabs the twig and berries. He's like, "Shut up, or I will kill you." <laughs> but that's one way to squash a a talkative person for sure. Yeah. Um. So, cor- meanwhile, Cordy and Wes uh, are warning Gun about the dangers of an evil angel and um, Darla combined, and we get another flashback. And you mean this good guy, this good guy vampire work for could go bad? You don't say, huh? <laughs> yeah. So in the flashback, Angel- Angelus and uh, Darla, they're fooling around um, with a terrified Drusilla. And, you know, she gets driven insane by because uh, they made her watch her entire family be murdered by vampires. I was like, she was already a little, like, wacky. Like a doodle, so. It's just so funny. They're, like, about to do it, like, literally, like, right on top of her. And she's just, like, going, shaking, snake in the woodshed, snake in the woodshed. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, like can we know yeah yeah that's that is a straight up old timey euphemism <laughs> needs to make a comeback <laughs> and i wonder why we're doing all these flashbacks with drusilla hmm, that can't possibly be coming back up or anything there's no foreshadowing in the buffy universe what do you mean everything's fly by the seat of your pants and um yeah <laughs> kidding well at least not till later <laughs> anyway um, and although Darla doesn't really seem to approve, um, Angel- Angelus wants to like make Drusilla a vampire. Oh yeah. Cause she's like, but she's mad. Uh, eternal torment. Yeah. I'm just like, you sick. Boop. <laughs> I know. Can you imagine that demon gets bonded to her? It's like, oh, thanks a lot. Exactly. <laughs> um, meanwhile, uh, in the present day, Darla and Lindsay's plan goes into effect when Angel breaks into a dead, a- Kramer's house. Well, first they, uh, you know, one of the vampire bodyguard, the vampire bodyguard kills the husband, and then she, you know, makes the nine one one call and starts saying, "Oh, he's broken. He's, you know, he killed my husband." <laughs> yeah, like, Angel, why are you going in? Just don't go in. Don't play their game. <laughs> but he kicks the door in. Yeah. So he just got set up for murdering Darla's husband. So that's fun. And of course, the police that arrive include Kate for some reason. Very yeah. quickly. Well, I don't think she's first. She don't. She's not on the scene right away. It's after he he leaves. I think she. she yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying, how convenient. I just love like those. You know, it's like hands above your head, get on your knees, and he just looks at Darla. He's like, "You're gonna pay for this." And he <laughs> runs. He like runs off. They put two in his back. Like, oh, that had to hurt. Just a little itch. It was. It was but a mere scratch. <laughs> it was not to kill you, but that still gotta hurt. Yeah. So yeah, he barely escapes without being captured. 
quote unquote. <laughs> and then Kate is talking with Darla. Of course, she's eating up all the lies about Angel and especially the one about um, him stalking her. Because let's be real, Angel is a straight up creeper. <laughs> Even in the best intentions, he's a creeper. He said he hoped. How did we first meet him on, on Buffy? Creeping. Yeah. On, a, on, on, a, on a sophomore in high school. Let's just put that in uh, perspective. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, um, so yeah, Angel grabs Darlin, takes her away to some underground facility, and it's like one that was a former convent. Oh, yeah, it was that same place from the beginning of the episode where they killed the demon. Yeah. And then Angel, like, realizes what's going on. <laughs> kind of, sort of. They brought you back as human. Yeah. And in that box from that episode. Oh, yeah. He's like, so you're what Wolverman Hart brought back in that box. Yeah. And it asks um, if she can feel it. Uh, blah. <laughs> blah. What? Sorry. Phrasing. <laughs> so, so what? Her soul? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because he said, yeah, the memories are going to from experience. Those memories are going to be coming back. But it doesn't work like that because she's human. She's not an actual vampire with a soul, so... Yeah, but she does have a soul and she does have all those memories, I mean... But I think it would be different, like, you know what I mean? Like, you're you're dead and but, like, when you're human, you're supposed to have a soul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know, like, I, like, I've never really tried to think about the mechanics of all of that, like, honestly, with all the fan fiction that I write, it's just fluffy lemons if you're a fanfic writer you you know what that's all about so like i'm, I'm not one of those world building fanfic writers no <laughs> we well, you know what your fanfic's about snakes. Exactly. <laughs> snakes, snakes in the wood you know what i might have to write a new fanfic called snake in the woodshed <laughs> um anyway yeah so he's like trying to like bring out the real darla i was like the real darla was a straight up see you next tuesday though streetwalker no, I mean, she was, she was, she, you know, she, I, from what they've portrayed in the show, she wasn't that much different as a human than she was as a vampire. Oh, I know. Yeah. It's, I just, I would just, the, every time I see this, I'm just thinking maybe he was, pardon the pun, trying to pump her for information on Wolfman Hart's plan. <laughs> nice. <laughs> for more shtick like this, please join us on Wade's World. <laughs> anyway yeah so that's exactly what he's doing but they end up kissing and you know she's like you know let me make you happy and i'm like um <laughs> and he goes you you never made me happy i had she flips out <laughs> yeah i was just like damn son like how you just gonna hurt a girl's feelings like that? <laughs> he even said he's like it wasn't possible i didn't have a soul <laughs> And he's like, do you, I, I guess. So she, she's still persistent. She's like, oh, I'm going to bring this demon out one way or another. Hey, oh. <laughs> but I mean, she was like, she was like, oh, man. She was like, oh, what that cheerleader did? She's like, like guy gets a taste of something new and thinks he's, tasty, he's uh, touching God. Yeah. That, um, well, yeah, yeah, compared to her, she was a couple hundred years old by then. <laughs> Looking damn good. Looking damn good, Grandma. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, a couple hundred years old with uh, syphilis. Spoiler. Yeah, spoiler. That's a huge spoiler. Um, by the way, let me tell you guys that you really, really need to enjoy season two. Because season three gets wacky as hell. Still better than four. <laughs> Debatable. And we'll get there. Well, <laughs> you know why four? Well, four, it's in a different way. And it's only a few things that piss me off about season four. Season three gets super wacky and it's just like, like, I like it, but, and I like four, but they're both like, they both have really big, I have big issues. With them. Yeah. But so yeah, just, just save her season two. Cause I mean, it's, it's, it's going to get crazy. So hold on to your hats, kids. Um, Wild but, ride, man. <laughs> definitely. Um, so we get a SWAT team breaking into, uh, the, Hyper the Hyperion to search for Angel led by Kate. And Kate gets the meat gun. Yeah, she's, yeah. yeah. And, then, and then we get the stereotype. Let's see some ID, Charles. And then it's like, of course he has a rap sheet. Because he's a black man. He, of course he has to have a rap sheet. Well, to be fair, he was a gang leader. Yeah. To be fair. <laughs> I mean, they were living on the street, too. So Yes. Yeah. But, yeah, they could have not added that. 
on top of the other things that they did to Gun. Exactly. Um. So yeah, Gun points out that Darla's story is a lie because Angel, as a vampire, couldn't break into a house without valid invitation from someone inside the house, unless the legal residents were always dead. Dun dun dun. That's right. And then Wesley shows uh Katie a uh, old picture of Darla and says, "But did the woman who claimed to be Deanna Kramer look anything like this? <laughs> look familiar?" Yeah. She's like, I don't care. <laughs> and then they're like, um, yeah, because, you know, they forget that innocents do, although her father was not that innocent, they do die in the crossfire. And that, you know, those are the people that Kate cares about. Same people Angel supposedly cares about. Yeah. <laughs> is the way that she is, like, basically phrasing that. So I'm just like, oh, I mean- Kate. And we, and we never saw her again, I think. I don't know. I have to check my notes at the oh. end in my trivia, but I'm pretty sure we never saw her again. You see her at least one last time. No, shut up. Yeah. No. Did I block this out? <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know if I want to spoil it, but I'll tell, I can tell you off air. Uh, what episode is it? Oh, I can't remember the name. It's after him and Darla. Uh, oh, I did block that out. Yeah. So I think that, I did block that out. Like, I couldn't remember if she appeared any time before that, but I, I'm pretty sure that's like the last episode, the last time we see Kate is after the, that whole thing. Okay, yeah. Um, Darla kind of is refusing to give up on Angel, but he's like, um, you have a soul now. You'll begin to feel all the weight of the evil. She's like, haha, no, I won't. Um, then she leaves him and he's kind of like oh, chilling. Yeah, Cause she runs up, but runs up the steps in the sun, into the sunlight. She's like, no goodbye, kiss. <laughs> And he's like stuck underground until the sun sets. And I, I just laugh every single freaking time. <laughs> and Angel's like kind of brooding in his room. And then, you know, Cordy and Wesley are like, hey, are you evil? <laughs> I know. They bring up the train guy and Cordy's like, oh, no, it wasn't me. It was Wesley. Yeah. And then he's like, trouble's on the way. And I'm looking forward to it. I'm like, mm, mm-hmm, I bet you are. Bring it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. The fashion is just terrible oh my lord what about like that maid's costume cordelia was wearing in the hotel yeah it was awful oh i love that line though she well, how what she put it she's like i don't know what was better the public uh, humiliation or this or that she's like or the she's like or the uniform that told so many conventioners pet me i'm a whore <laughs> yeah um and i love how cordy says that angel is 248 he's like no 247 and for those of you that are deep into the lore this means that angel is kind of from the day he was sired and not including the hundred years he spent in uh akala's hell dimension yeah because he was 26 in 1753 i pay attention sometimes i know no sometimes i get nitpicky especially in a universe i care about i get it <laughs> Um, the death count was super low, super low. Uh, one, one, uh, failed actor. A thrall demon, Stephen Kramer, Drusilla and her family. Yes. Um, oh, and then we got a Sherlock Holmes reference and also a Philip Marlowe reference. And I'm like, you can keep the Philip Marlowe to your damn self, first of all. <laughs> Maybe he's big in Britain. <laughs> The Big Sleep, I get it. It's a movie. It's black and white. Um, but it, I mean, that's from a short story by you know called Finger Man, and like whatever. Like I don't know. I just feel like that's not something they would reference. But you know, maybe that's just me. Maybe it's just someone's favorite on set or something. Maybe. Um. Anyway, what else do I have? Uh... But those people are fictional. Oh yeah, that's good. <laughs> so see, Angel already has a leg up. <laughs> yeah. Um. If you see in one of his books, the one where Wesley shows uh, Kate that picture of Darla that was taken over a hundred years ago, um, like it's weird because it like contradicts the story that Darla tells Angel, and I'm just like, it's because it's after like cause Spike comes a little bit after Drusilla, like a li- like there's a gap. Yeah, it's I don't know, it's just weird. When I was trying to read that page, I'm like, okay, I'll just I'll just let it go. <laughs> And that picture, that, that old picture is very clear. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. Yeah. Zoom and enhance, apparently. Zoom and enhance. Convenient plot point, I know. Um, yeah, it's not a lot. Like, I didn't, like, the dialogue was a little weird. <laughs> so I didn't really have, like, any favorite, like, lines or anything from this one. Or how about when he tell, he's telling uh, Wesley and Cordelia he saw... Darla, and they're like, where? He's like, between, what was it? Between the giant hot dog and the clouds. Yeah. 
Yeah, my favorite scene though, of course, is when he goes to see everybody have fun tonight, and he's like, "No." <laughs> everybody, Wang Chong tonight pulls the cord. <laughs> no. But yeah, you know, it's just like, okay, this is out in the open now. What are we gonna do? Like, I'm I'm ready for it. I've been ready for it since episode one. Finally. Oh, and then when he comes back and he's like doing the creepy hair sniff on Cordelia, I'm like, that's weird foreshadowing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hold on. I just want to check one thing about Kate. Just one thing. You have to know how many appearances she has left, don't you? Okay. Oh, I mean, she did show up in the comic books, but I'm not going to count that. (laughs) And she was uh, written much better in the comic books. Um, Uh, oh yeah she showed up in angel and faith too Mm. there she's not as written as well either but we'll just let that go (laughs) um yeah it's provider maybe i don't know only one more appearance or i think so So, well basically anything in season two after this because i know she don't appear any other seasons yeah she only, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking of season three because she gets mentioned in that vision thing. So yeah, that, that episode that we were talking about earlier, I think is her last actual physical appearance. Thank God. Anyway, um, this is like a B minus for me. Just cause like all the Darla and the Lindsay stuff and Wolfram and Hart. And it's like, I mean, this is really like where they're like laying down the foundation for Wolfram and Hart. And I'm so here for it. It's like, wow, you went through a lot of trouble. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'd probably go B. I like the, some of the dialogue and we're finally making some headway on this Darla thing. Yeah. But you know what hit me is weird. I mean, I don't know if this was intentional or not, but like when we saw Lindsay talking to her and stuff and just like then the flashbacks in the flashbacks, did Angel have hair uh, like that long when he had the long hair similar? Did it look similar to Lindsay's hair at that point? A little bit. And that makes sense because, you know, he was like a rich dude. Yeah. So does back it. when he got turned. So. Yeah. Does uh, so does Darla have a type? Oh yeah. Insufferable douchebags who love to brood. Like, come on, Angel's a bit of a douchebag. He's a lovable douchebag because we know him, but we didn't know him like, oh that douchebag. I know, but does Lindsay really brood or is he, I mean, I. He broods. Oh, he broods a I lot. Brood a he sits bit. and he broods and he, and he, and he stares off into space thinking how he can get vengeance on, revenge on Angel. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, at least he and Max plans, you know, and goes the Charlie Esser route and is like, hey, you know, we tried killing them yet. <laughs> but you know, he's stewed for quite a while. Like he, he is known to stew. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> he's sitting there with that stump for all summer. I know. Exactly. Um, but yeah, you know, it was a choice. <laughs> this episode was a choice. <laughs> yeah, he wanted the Darla. Oh, yeah, I think, because I think, doesn't Holland tell him, give him the big reveal about Darla? Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know. I feel like when pop culture references lack, the episode lacks. Kind of like with Buffy, I think it's a very, um, it's a very, uh, tied relationship for some reason i know but it's it's but also too i mean like we're you know like a 20 year show i mean this episode is almost 20 years old it's like sometimes do the, the pop culture references date it though because sometimes when they well, make not, see this is the funny thing with pop culture like especially because it was 2000 it's like right when like a lot of shows were doing it yeah and you know we're of an age where it's like yeah we get it we can rewatch we have rewatchability factors because we lived through that like i don't know if somebody that's like 13 um i think i was like 11 when buffy came out like i don't know that somebody could go back like like, like and watch buffy that's like 11 or 13 now <laughs> they'd be like <laughs> laughing their ass off because it's, it's it, it doesn't hold up like visually because you look at one of those laptops and you're like Ooh, I know. that's what i was gonna say what I, is that a fax machine <laughs> that was the one i saw this episode when cordelia was on the computer yeah yeah like it's got a fat back what is that <laughs> Where is the flat screen monitor? Where are we? oh, and flip phones hurt my soul. Like, let me tell you, the minute that the first thing that wasn't a flip phone was available, like I had the BlackBerry, like the day it came out, I was just like, I am not here for these damn flip phones. I know it's so funny you see it on TV now. It's like open, 
holding an antenna up. I know. It's like, I didn't even like the razor, okay? Like, everybody in their mama had a razor. I was like, no, I got my Blackberry. I'm good. And then after the Blackberry came the iPhone and then my S3. And I'm forever an Android girl. No, I'm joking. I went back at the six, but I still hated it. So then I went back and now I'm forever a Samsung girl. But yeah, I just, I can't with flip phones. Oh, that's why Gotham and just, oh, it annoyed me. <laughs> that's not, I, they, I swear they still make flip phones, but it's only like senior citizens who have them now. Dude, even the jitterbug that you can order for your grandparents are not a flip phone. I don't know. If I see you with a flip phone, I'm just assuming you're a drug dealer. <gasps> Sorry. Traceable. <laughs> Sorry. That That's just, that's how it goes. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So, you know, um, it is a hell of a ride from here on out, really. <laughs> yeah. So I'm really looking forward to the next episode and we get kind of deep into this lore with Wolfman Hart and we really get to um, get a little backstory on Gun and the host and all those things. So lots of good stuff to look forward to. Oh, yeah. I, I do wish that we had kept Darla around a little longer, I will say. Yeah. But it's, she's, that was kind of a BAMF moment when, at the end of the season where, she, yeah, <laughs> we'll get there. Well, <laughs> wait, was it, wasn't that in season three, though? It, it, technically like at the beginning yeah Cause, well she yeah because she kind of goes away when they you know yeah and then comes back in season three yeah for, yeah for that moment yeah yeah <laughs> but like yeah they, i guess they couldn't really keep her around if that was the route that they were going mm-hmm. <laughs> so but yeah it's just like oh i miss you julie benz i miss julie benz on tv like y'all should go um binge no ordinary family i think it's on hulu that would be so funny if, like, they did do like some kind of like reboot. You know, if, if they uh brought them all the actors back and it's just like they resurrected her again. They're just like, oh, again. <laughs> you know, she really, literally hasn't aged at all. Like, it's like, oh, her and Keanu Reeves. I'm just like, I, I see you. I think you're vampires in real life. It's fine. <laughs> I know you see pictures of her. I'm just like, wow. You know who else is, like is aging slowly? Look at Amy Acker. Uh, yeah. I was like, how the hell is she playing a mom on The Gifted? What the damn hell? I know. I was looking at those pictures from the, the, you know, the Entertainment Weekly. I was like, holy crap. I'm just like, she barely looks like, you know, it's been 20 years. Looks like, I don't think she's aged five. Oh, if you guys need more Amy Acker and you're not into The Gifted, rewatch Person of Interest. (laughs) Philip, didn't you say you never watched it? Like, no, I never watched it. Yeah, you should, you should. She comes in at the very, um, in season one, kind of okay. towards the middle. Like, she's not really big and prominent until, like, I'd say season two, if I remember right. But, like, yeah. Person of interest, if you love Batman, that is the real live action Batman. Like, Jim Caviezel for Old Man Batman, since everybody wants Batman Beyond. That's all I'm saying. Watch it. You'll know what I'm talking about. If you know, you know. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So, let's get out of here. We got some other podcasts I- I've been told that we need to do. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, boss. Anyway, uh, yeah, send us your thoughts. Like Galil said, big season coming up. So send us your thoughts on any of the upcoming episodes. Send them on the episodes we already did this season. Share your feedback. I still, for the life of me, can't rem- remember what the reference to the episode title is. There's what? like a book called Dear Boy, but like, I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm still I, perplexed. I always thought it was, you know, something Darla called him or something. I don't know. There's a song by Paul McCartney. Maybe that's what it is. Uh, somebody was a Wings fan. <laughs> anyway, send your thoughts. Capes and Lunatics at gmail.com. Follow Angel Chronicles on Facebook at Angel TV Podcast on Twitter. Uh, Instagram, follow CL Sidekicks. Uh, the voicemail, 614-382-2737 at 614-38Capes. And check out Work in Progress, capesandlunatics.org. You know what? One more time. One more time, you're going to be petty with me, and it's going to be the last. Um, oh if you nerds want to see Phil get his come up, comeuppance for being petty with me, you can find me on Twitter at Lil Hellfire. And just for my Capes and Lunatics and Capes and Lunatics sidekick peeps, you can find me on the gram at Lil Hellfire69 because it is in my possession now. Let the memes commence. <laughs> That's what you get, Darla. You fill up the package. <laughs> She definitely was not gentle with the back. Oh, no, 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 no. 
See, all I said was work in progress, capes of lunatics.org. I didn't say, you know, we're going to resurrect it in a box. <laughs> Did I hear a boob window? What? Long boxes? <laughs> I'm confused. <gasps> resurrect one of us in a long box. <laughs> Bury me in the long box. <laughs> oh, oh, my lord. I've always thought, I'm like, oh, when I die, I want to be cremated and buried, like, with a comic or two. <gasps> Bury me in a long box full of comics. Yep. <gasps> All the good ones. Sorry, Luca. <laughs> no college fun for you. <laughs> well, I hope I'm still alive by that point. All right. Are we out of here? Yes. I've been waiting for you to hit the button. <laughs> <Ew>. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for joining us for the Angel Chronicles. Thanks, thanks for protecting me from the world. <laughs> Ran up the steps in the sunlight. <laughs> You're like my side. Are you created this new podcast? I like it in the dark down here. It's fine. You may be a legend. Oh, tomorrow? Uh, Wait, wrong podcast. <laughs> Next time, everyone. Remember, be help the helpless.